This is my first year growing a whole lot of cucumbers and it has been full of problems. One of them being aphids. But fortunately I have found a solution. Stick around to the end to get the recipe for what I have used and see the results of how well it works. This year I have decided that I really want to grow as many cucumbers as possible. My family have decided that they love eating gherkins and we have taken to going through quite a few. I did end up buying some cucumber plants because my first round just didn't germinate at all and I put some more on the ground but I really wanted some actual plants so I bought some from the shop and I kind of regret it because unfortunately they brought some aphids in with them. Now I've not really had a great deal of issues with aphids in tunnel houses before but this was this was intense. The type of aphids I ended up with were the small black ones known as the melon aphid which the upside to that is predominantly it has mostly affected my cucumbers and my melons. Unfortunately I had these two little tiger melon plants that I was super hopeful that I was going to get some, uh, some fruit off and unfortunately the aphids killed them completely. And the other problem with aphids is that they can create a sticky substance known as honeydew which can attract ants and also grow sooty mold which of course is this black sooty substance that can be really detrimental to the health of your plants as well. Also aphids can bring with them other diseases. Not only do they suck your plants dry but they can be really bad for your plants overall health. I did notice that I had an aphid issue at the beginning of November but by the time it had got bad enough that I thought oh maybe I should buy in some insects to help keep it under control by the time they actually arrived because it took a good week or two by that point the aphids were out of control. Now one of my very good friends she has mentioned multiple times this product called white oil and I Honestly, I thought it was something that you bought and she assumed that I knew what she was talking about and finally one day I was like, so what is this white oil? She said it's really, really easy to make. So to make white oil, all you need is one, a biggish container. I used a 1.5 litre container and you need one litre of either vegetable oil or mineral oil. And so all you do is put one litre or that's equivalent to essentially a quart. So a quart of oil into this big bottle and then add one cup of some kind of liquid soap. Now we make our own liquid soap using a potassium hydroxide instead of sodium hydroxide which makes solid soap so I use that. It's equivalent to like a Dr. Bronner's or any of those sort of liquid castile soaps or you can just use some dish detergent. They all work the same. All it needs to do is mix in with the oils and make it able to mix in with the water. Add your one liter of oil or one quarter oil, one cup of your soap into your bottle and give it a really good shake and this is what it looks like. Now not surprisingly it goes white, hence its name I suppose. Now this stuff is your concentrate, don't use it straight like this you'll kill some plants. Before I discovered this recipe I tried kind of just winging it and slopped some soap and some oil into my backpack sprayer and unfortunately it defoliated all of my peppers. So don't try that. Follow this recipe and follow the dilution protocol that they suggest. To use it, it really depends on what you're going to use. If you're just going to use one of those little handheld sprayer things, you can add two tablespoons uh, into a quart of water or two tablespoons into a litre of water. If you're going to use a backpack sprayer like what I have used, uh, you're going to want half a cup of white oil into five liters or five quarts of water. I know a liter and a quart don't perfectly align but they are close enough in this recipe. The other difference is if you're using the metric system a metric cup is slightly more than a imperial cup and so it kind of just works out. Use your local cup and then to use it is super easy. All you need to do is give it a really good spray. You want to make sure that you're getting the tops of the leaves and the underneath and you'll find that the underneath is really where those aphids get in and if you've got any leaves that are curving up at the sides make sure you're getting into those curves. Um, it's not going to damage your hands or anything so it's a good idea to get in there and kind of unfurl the leaves and make sure you're giving everything a really good spray all the way around. Make sure it's really well coated, it's not going to harm the plants and actually it only hurts soft body insects so it's not going to upset things like ladybugs or the parasitic wasps. All of those little black dots are dead aphids. They've dehydrated from this mixture. Now over here there you can see the green aphids that are starting to take hold and you can see the leaves that they've been on are just get kind of old and wrinkly 
whereas and sort of diseased looking see look at all those black spots every single one of those was an aphid these are the new leaves and they're so lush and green now ideally if you just have a really small infestation one or two sprays of this and then a maintenance dose of once a week will well and truly keep on top of them if however you find yourself with a massive massive overrun of aphids like what i ended up with you can use this every second day and i have been doing that for 10 days now um, and I think I feel like I'm finally getting on top of these aphids it was really amazing to see the difference come back the next day and see all the dead bodies on the bottoms of the leaves I have picked off most of the worstly affected leaves because they had damaged them so badly that they were starting to get diseased and look really unwell but what I didn't do was throw those leaves away because I had those parasitic wasps and I could tell that some of them were laying the eggs inside some of the aphids because they look quite different you can see here that the wee brown perfectly round slightly bigger lumps they are the mummified aphids that the parasitic wasps have laid eggs in and so my very very infested leaves um, with a lot of aphids on them actually had quite a few of these egg cells on them as well the upside to the parasitic wasp of course is that it can fly so i just put all of these into this bucket now this bottle of concentrate will last like this for a really long time if you see it starting to split all you have to do is give it a good shake i've been even keeping it in the tunnel house and it has been fine it is pretty shelf stable and once i have well and truly got on top of these aphids i'm going to be doing this once a week for the rest of the season it doesn't harm the plants as long as you've done it to the right dilution and it will keep these aphids in check i have gone around and checked all my other plants and i found that a lot of my peppers had green aphids so i have been spraying those as well aphids come in all sorts of colors the black or very very dark green ones uh, the melon aphids i did not realize they also come in pink so they come in gray and green and yellow um, and pink of all colors and the other thing i didn't know what these was that these little fluffy looking white things are actually the exoskeletons that they have shed as they are getting bigger so they're not some other kind of bug i thought they might have been the baby ladybugs that i had ordered because they go fluffy and white as well i haven't managed to see anything that looks like a baby ladybug i assume they're here somewhere i haven't managed to find them they're not the typical red uh, ladybugs they are actually one called a dusky ladybug which is quite a bit smaller and quite dark brown I presume they're here somewhere and they're hiding but we have found quite a few of the red ladybugs out in the main garden and every time we find one we've been bringing it inside and saying here's a little feast and popping it on a plant with some aphids we have even found some juvenile of those red ladybugs in here which is very exciting they will help us keep this horrible aphid population in check now you can see my plants now have beautiful lush green leaves and are putting out significantly more flowers i have got a couple of cucumbers off these plants already but they really seem to be getting into their stride now that i've stopped their sap sucking parasites all over them and i have high hopes for the rest of the season do you have anything that works really well for aphids in your area please let me know about it in the comments below because this whilst it works really well if there's something easier i definitely want to know about it i hope this has been helpful for you i will catch you in the next one